Uh, Jonathan, uh, thank you for joining us. I'm really happy that you uh, that you have a time, and uh, I'm really um, glad that uh, we can hear more about the Value Reporting Foundation because there is a, such a dynamic environment and so much is uh, changing. So we as reporters are a bit lost. So I uh, titled our um, today uh, today uh, today webinar in Reporting Jungle. So uh, I would ask you to uh, shortly intro in, to do a short introduction to Value Reporting Foundation, and then we move uh, to our interview. Great. Um, well, thank you very much indeed, uh, Liliana, for that introduction. Um, and it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, it, it, there's an old proverb, um, if you want to go fast, go alone, and if you want to go far, go together. And I think that that proverb and the sentiment behind it really underpins a lot of the work going on in the corporate reporting world at the moment. And this sentiment really motivated the merger earlier this year between the International Integrated Reporting Council and the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, two market-led organizations that have been developing frameworks and standards and principles for broader corporate reporting over the last decade that have decided to come together create a greater system of simplicity and harmonization in the world of reporting. And we believe that this is the first step in consolidation in the corporate reporting system globally. The Value Reporting Foundation is the global nonprofit organization that provides a home for the integrated reporting framework, SASB standards, and integrated reporting principles. And I'm Jonathan Lebray, the Value Reporting Foundation's Chief Policy Officer. And I'd also just like to say at the outset that it's a huge pleasure to contribute to Sustainable Business Week. And congratulations on such a wonderful programme of engagements. And this forum is happening in the shadow of, of COP26 next week. And where we're going to see, I think, even further progress towards the transition towards a globally accepted and comprehensive corporate reporting system. And I'd just like to share one or two insights with you about the Value Reporting Foundation and the contribution that we're making to this comprehensive global system of corporate reporting. Firstly, we know that transparency has a role in improving corporate performance. And corporate reporting, if you think about the standards and frameworks that are hardwired into the uh, globe today, really we've practiced only two types of line of sight We've, we've mastered hindsight, providing information that looks backwards, and we've, we've mastered oversight, the regulatory oversight, the compliance burden on companies in respect of disclosure standards and requirements. But what we have really underperformed on is providing foresight, using information to really give an insight into management's view about the prospects of a business how the mega trends affecting the world today are going to impact the business model into the future to develop um, resilient business models and business models that stakeholders can have confidence to invest in and be employed by and be supporting. And the second line of sight that we need to do far more to address is the insight, providing insight into management's decision-making, its thinking, how it's managing risk and opportunity. So the resources that we provide, the integrated reporting framework, standards and the, the principles of integrated thinking are aimed at addressing those two lines of sight, providing foresight and providing insight management decision making. And the link to performance is now well chronicled by the world's best business schools, academics, and also by evidence from business practice in the world. We know that this type of reporting leads to a lower cost of capital. It leads to higher share price performance and it leads to long term investment, reorienting capital towards long term investment. And we think that that's absolutely critical because we know that the nature of value has changed uh, over uh, the years. And what integrated reporting brings uh, into this conversation about uh, particularly sustainability and ESG is the role of intangible value the innovation 
that is required to invest in the R&D, the intellectual capital, in order to power the business models of the future. And what this graph shows is how the nature of value has really responded to these mega trends. The fact that now a, a business can no longer report just on its financial performance, because that only accounts for less than uh, 20 percent of its market value today. There's so much more of the value of a business is accounted for by that intangible value, whether it is, it's the impact of the business on the environment or society, or whether it's the brand of the business. Coca-Cola, uh, Interbrand, uh, says that the value of Coca-Cola's brand uh, accounts for about 49% of its market value. So a business that isn't responding to those trends, where value today is accounted for not by the financial statements, but by other factors, really is missing out both on value but also putting value at risk. And so the Value Reporting Foundation has these three resources. Integrated thinking, which can be practiced by any business. And that's really about breaking down silos, making sure that the business has aligned KPIs from the boardroom right the way through to the shop room floor, and making sure that risks and opportunities are elevated to the board and management much earlier by breaking down those organizational silos. You'll be amazed how many companies that we speak to have strategy virtually in every single department. And so few of those strategies connect and provide that integrated thinking, uh, which is what stakeholders want, but also what investors need to have a very, very clear understanding uh, that the business is creating value over the long term. The integrated reporting framework it's a principles-based framework based on the idea that businesses today don't just manage financial value. But we have what introduced what we call the six capitals, which are really the resources in everyday, in the everyday world that businesses are using to create value. So it's human capital, the people that they employ in order to create value, that intellectual capital, the patents, copyrights, and trademarks, but also the ESG factors, the environmental factors, the social factors and the governance factors that we know today are so instrumental to driving performance and long-term value. And then thirdly, we have the SASB standards. And these are industry-specific standards because what industry-specific standards do is provide an extra layer of precision, particularly for investors, so that they can compare apples with apples, companies in the same sector globally. And it also drives uh, collaboration between companies in the same industry, get the metrics right so that they're meaningful for that industry. And that collaboration is useful for other areas as well. For example, in decarbonizing the supply chain, where collaboration between companies in the same industry is absolutely essential over the long term. Those industry specific metrics are absolutely fundamental to a comprehensive reporting system. And we believe together these resources provide a robust tool set for businesses and investors and broader society to understand the value created, sustained or eroded by business over the short term, long term and, and medium term. And critically, because the world that we operate in, it's really the world of enterprise value, closing that gap between the book value of a company and its market cap, we believe that this kind of information really does help the engagement between a business and its investors, bringing capital markets up to speed with where the rest of the world is on environmental performance and ESG and sustainable development, helping us to allocate capital more efficiently and productively and helping to finance the sustainable development goals and the, the transition to net zero that we know is absolutely essential, but it cannot happen without capital markets being involved. And then finally, um, Eliana, how do we describe our role within the corporate reporting system? And we really do think now that we are transitioning from a world where all of these different standards and framework providers uh, were seen to be, and I don't think that they were necessarily, but seem to be competing with one another. I think we've now got a real sense of collaboration in the, uh, the global corporate reporting system. And we're seeing that now evidenced last year where the five global standard setters and framework providers came together to provide uh, two really important pieces of work. One, a vision for the corporate reporting system, 
and another a prototype standard for climate related disclosures that we know are now being used by the IFRS Foundation to develop its first standard if it evaluates the need to establish an international sustainability standard pool. And this diagram really shows how the different frameworks and standards and the different information set, uh, sets really fit together in a dynamic way, where yes, there are boundaries between the different types of materiality, but where we understand today that that boundary is not fixed, dependent on regulatory change, dependent on the changing needs and expectations of stakeholders, and the realities of a world where uh, these sorts of issues now are much more dynamic. And what the integrated reporting framework does is help to drive the connectivity of information between the different sources of value, financial performance and sustainability performance to really bring together that global and comprehensive system. So I'll leave it there, Liliana. I hope that's a, a useful introduction to what we're doing and some of the ambitions that we have. Thank you so much for the short introduction and showing us what resources we have uh, in our disposal, uh, what you give to the reporting community. Um, uh, there are companies in Poland who are using uh, integrated reporting framework and they use it uh, in combination with other standards, uh, also using GRI. And I saw that you also published recently a new paper on how to use uh, integrated reporting with the SASB you show, uh, you just present uh, it now. Does it mean, because we, uh, we, had the, we have such a questions, does it mean that the organizations who are using now, now uh, integrated reporting framework have to use it uh, with uh, SASB or still they can use it with uh, other standards? Yeah, so what we're trying to do is bring, and it's a market-led initiative, so uh, we have no regulatory power. Um, but what we're trying to do is simplify the corporate reporting system. So we're, what we're saying is that if you would like to use the integrated reporting framework and SASB standards together, then we'll show you how you can do that. We'll show you examples of companies that are doing it in a very, very simple and clear way. So that if businesses want to use the standards and the framework together and the integrated thinking principles, they can do. But there are also companies that are using integrated reporting, SASB standards and the GRI standards. And actually, yeah. just before the merger, SASB and GRI put out a paper showing how the GRI standards and the SASB standards can also fit together because you're talking about information for different audiences. And in a sense, you know, the SASB standards are a filtering process from that broader universe of societal and environmental impact information, absolutely critical to sustainable development and particularly critical to developing the aggregate information by sector that can be useful to policymakers and regulators to really understand what regulatory change needs to be made. But then I think if you're filtering that down to a business level where you're trying to engage with investors, you just need an extra layer of specificity. That kind of industry specific lens delivers that for you. So that's how you can really start to see how the GRI standards and the SASB standards really fit together. It's a process of filtering for different audiences and different information needs. Yeah. I agree with you. We observed we observed this uh, the same thing that when you look at the especially large international companies, they have this table at the end of the report and they refer to uh, SASB GRI and integrated reporting framework and sometimes other framework as well. So as you said, uh, it's because of the different audiences and we need to know our audience to know what the tool use. You show us uh, what the, what the way you um, you went uh, this, uh, this this year with the Value Reporting Foundation. You established a lot of resources, a new website, and so on. It's more, much more clear to us uh, what we can use. And can you um, tell us what are the plans? Because we are at the end of the year. What are the plans of uh, Value Reporting Foundation for the next year? What can what can we expect as uh, reporters? Absolutely. Well, there are two elements. First of all, there's what we call our business as usual activity. So that's engaging with, with businesses and investors around the world and regulators to really promote the use of our framework and standards. We're about to produce, well, we've very recently produced a getting started guide. So that's available on our website for any business that is looking to get started on the integrated reporting journey. Very, very practical advice on how to get started, how to bring about that integrated thinking, who within the business should be 
thinking about leading that process of change. So that's a very practical piece of guidance for companies. Um, and we're going to be doing something similar for integrated thinking, producing integrated thinking principles that actually match to the case studies on integrated thinking that we've also produced. So companies like AB and AMRO and Leonardo and, and others have produced um, uh, case studies on how they have started their journey to integrated um, thinking. The third piece, though, which is really a piece that is at a system level, is the work that we've been doing over the last six months with the RFS Foundation. So um, the RFS Foundation, which is the, the global organization that currently sets counting standards, is evaluating whether to set up alongside the IASB, the International Accounting Standards Board, a new board for the International Sustainability Standards Board that would set this global baseline of sustainability standards for capital markets. Now, they're not intending to use new standards. They want to use existing standards because we don't want to complicate and create a whole new set of standards. So they've brought together the Value Reporting Foundation us with the World Economic Forum their stakeholder capitalism metrics, CDSB, which is the Climate Disclosure Standards Board, TCFD, and all of those resources, those technical resources, are being used as part of a technical readiness working group to prepare the IFRS Foundation so that it has a running start to launch the new International Sustainability Standards Board. So what you would see if the IFRS Foundation decides to launch that, and we expect it, that it will do and hope that it will do, then you'll see the SASB standards being used as part of the uh, ISSB, the new International Sustainability Standards Board. And the importance of that is that the monitoring board of the RFS Foundation is led by IOSCO, the global um, securities regulators. And so it will have that endorsement mechanism around the world to enable the endorsement of these standards. And working with local regulators, we will then get those standards endorsed. And the integrated reporting framework will be used to connect the IASB, the financial reporting standards, and the new sustainability standards. So you'll have that connectivity of information as well. Well, I think it will be a major step uh, in um, proliferation of uh, sustainability reporting or ESG reporting when uh, in this new this new standard board will be established, and as you said, it will happen at the end of this uh, of this year. So that will be a major development, and we will uh, look into it as well. Uh, how it's uh, how it's the work of this uh, new standard board will will going. But now when we are looking at different standards, um, we see that ESG sometimes, uh, I said it's reporting jungle, but climate reporting is a maze we are stuck in. It's my impression that, and other companies. And what, because you have this specific view on investor needs, like uh, in integrated reporting connects sustainability and financial value. So what to use to satisfy investors? Greenhouse um, protocol, TCFD, CDP, today a uh, scientific um, based target initiative announced its uh, new, new standard. So what are we supposed to use and uh, what uh, climate reporting look like from your point of view, where we are going with this reporting? Yeah, well, businesses do need to make an assessment. And so obviously there's local regulation, which is and now what we're seeing um, in many parts of the world is TCFD becoming mandated uh, by, by regulators. And I think at COP26, um, if you listen to the mood music uh, coming out of regulators, it looks like that that's going to be accelerated, that the whole uh, TCFD pro process, from a, from a voluntary perspective, the business really does need to make its own evaluation of what is needed, depending on which audience it's seeking to communicate with from a sustainability and climate uh, perspective. From the perspective of the Value Reporting Foundation, TCFD uh, has real value because it uses existing financial uh, reporting and uh, risk management processes so that you're integrating climate within your mainstream uh, decision making so that you're not creating something in a silo or the board and management saying, well, we'll set up a compliance over here it's actually embedded within the finance within the core structure of your financial reporting and this really is the vision i think that the ccfd have is that you would have finance teams with a their data bank of, of information just as at the moment they're assessing the financial impact on the business of 
interest rate risk or something like that, that they would be looking at climate risk on the same dashboard and being able to really assimilate that and, and understand the financial impact of climate risk alongside those other financial risks. So for us, that's what the real benefit is and all the scenario analysis that goes alongside that. Absolutely critical because then you're thinking about your business model and how your your products and services need to change and evolve. And that then brings in what I was talking about in my presentation, the importance of the intangibles, the importance of intellectual capital. The International Energy Agency has said that around a third of the R&D uh, needed in order to make this transition to net zero is currently a prototype standard and we need a massive increase in uh, investment in research and development to really bring these prototypes into the into the mainstream to help that transition. So for us, it's about connecting a lot of the dots. TCFD, for the magic of the TCFD, if you like, is that it's about using existing processes, existing uh, financial reporting processes, so that it just becomes embedded in the strategy and the governance of the organisation. And for us, that's really critically important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's actually a good uh, a good hint. Uh, what uh, what to use? Uh, we are also a TCFD team. I would say we recommend uh, we recommend this standard because, as you said, it's uh, it will be uh, it will be obligatory in the future. Probably the climate reporting will be based on it. Uh, I know that you will be participating in UN Climate Summit uh, in Glasgow. Uh, what are your hopes connected with uh, this year assembly regarding climate change? What we can expect, if you can well, share. Well, the first, <laughs> absolutely, uh, Liliana, I mean, we will be attending. So uh, I will be uh, heading to Glasgow uh, next week with a delegation from the Value Reporting Foundation, uh, me and 25,000 other people, I think, which will be uh, fantastic. Uh, I think there are three things that I would say that I would hope that, 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 that Glasgow achieves. First of all, a, a political commitment to a, a, this being a global a global system, because I think what we need is to avoid regional fragmentation. You know, we have global uh, goals when it comes to sustainable development. We have global supply chains. We have global capital markets. I think to have a fragmented corporate reporting system would be really at odds with the, the, the way that the rest of the world is, is operating. So we need a global corporate reporting system and we need strong political endorsement of that system will then enable G20 and G7 endorsement. And I think we will get that. So that's something to look out for. But I think a global system is critical. Aligned to that, I really hope, you know, Finance Day, I think it's the 3rd of November, next Wednesday. You know, I really hope, fingers crossed, that the IFS Foundation decides that it will uh, announce the launch of the International Sustainability Standards Board. Their trustees have to make that decision and, and evaluate all the, the, the input that they've had from the market. Uh, but we really hope that that will, that will send a very, very strong signal about the need for this global system and get that, that whole process running. But the third point is that we shouldn't be seeing climate, I know it's a climate summit, but we really should be seeing climate as a catalyst now for standards in uh, other areas of sustainability. You know, I know Christian's going to talk about Y and SASBs and IRC. You know, we've always seen sustainability as you know, climate is part of sustainability. We understand the political momentum around climate change and the, the race to net zero, but actually in many ways, the market is ahead of the political conversation and are beginning to embed many more metrics and, and standards within their practice. We want the, the global system, if you like, to cap with the market so that we have a genuine set of global sustainability standards that are broader than climate. Let's hope that COP26 is a catalyst for delivering that broader conversation. Well, in Poland, we are waiting for political commitment. I hope we will. I hope we will see it also on our on our side. Um, I have also a short question because uh, the reporting is dynamic. So, what do you think, ESG reporting or sustainability reporting? Which term we will be used in the future? How do you see it? <laughs> um, I. I I mean, we, we, we call for corporate, we just want corporate reporting. So we want you know, an integrated, you think about what an integrated report is. It, you know, if you look at corporate reporting at the moment, you open an annual report. Um, and quite often it's just a, date, a lot of financial data at the beginning. 
it is disconnected from strategy, disconnected from the business model. You then have narrative reporting, which again has no link necessarily to the financial report. And then you have a whole lot of data at the back where a lot of material information is often in the notes to the accounts. This is the way that accounting standards have developed over the years. What we're saying is that all the material information, whether it's in the financial reporting or in the sustainability report at the moment, or other information that's relevant to value, should be in a really concise communication so that you no longer have that data bank at the beginning, which is just completely disconnected with EPS measured three ways and profit, you know, not necessarily measured in the same way that it was last year and so on. You actually have annual reporting that reflects the genuine story of the business over time. And so for us, it isn't a question of ESG or sustainability. It's a question of let's have, you know, holistic, connected corporate reporting so that you can look at a business's reporting and actually get insight into how the business is being run. How, what, what are the board conversations happening? What are the board, so how are they allocating capital? And then you can actually begin to see uh, how companies are creating value over the short, medium and long term and being resilient. Um, so that, that would be my answer to, to that question. I, I don't think we want silos. We, we really do want integrated reporting. Mm -hmm. Well, I think maybe, you know, after this this time of distinguishing sustainability as due reporting, we will uh, we will uh, achieve this point you are you are you are uh, you are talking about that we will have just annual corporate reporting and it will be a holistic approach probably it's uh, i think it's, uh, it's, a, it's it's in the future however now we are saying usually esg or sustainability and there is a pressure growing on the data and there is a pressure growing on um, people who can uh, help companies uh, to do it and that's our observation here on our market probably in uh, the UK or in, in, or in continental Europe uh, is, is the same that uh, everybody are looking for uh, for experts and uh, there is a I would say new profession emerging ESG expert ESG manager and from your experience because you have uh, have a more global, I would say, view. What um, what are the usual responsibilities and such a positions and what competencies such a person should have? I'm asking you this question because the main theme of uh, this year, Sustainability Week, is working in ESG field. So in your opinion, what responsibilities, what competencies uh, this new ESG profession professionals uh, should have? Well, it is remarkable the transition that we're seeing with you know multidisciplinary teams. I, I remember being with an accounting firm uh, in the Far East well before the pandemic now, and being introduced to the uh, sustainability assurance team of the this big firm. And I think there was only one account. There were, there were about twelve or fifteen of them, and there was only one accountant actually. Uh, and this was a big four accountancy firm. They were engineers. Uh, they they came from uh, environmental science backgrounds, uh, you know they came from social social um, fields. Um, th there was a range of expertise and multi. And I think the, the way we're going to actually move now is to really having you know much a much greater focus on having multidisciplinary teams within uh, our sustainability world, our finance world, and actually having the finance having having accounts as part of that actually is is also really important. And Liliana, just linked to that, I just wanted to say and just use one example, which is Goldfields, which is a, a mining company in South Africa, because before they used integrated reporting, they would actually um, reward their mining managers, the people in the ground who were mining the natural resources. They would reward them on the basis of the amount of natural resources that they were mining. That was how they were incentivized. And then when Goldfields decided that it was going to pursue integrated reporting, um, as all South African companies are now doing, um, the board did a stakeholder analysis and asked its main stakeholders, what were the critical issues that the board should have as their KPIs, what the business should be reporting on, what are the material issues? All the stakeholders, including the investors, said that the number one issue on which Goldfield should be judged from a metric perspective was actually um, the health and safety issue of reducing accidents and eliminating fatalities in the mines because there's nothing from a human cost through to a reputation cost and risk actually having not having those 
health and safety measures in place that incentivized. And so from that point onwards, the board now has as its number one KPI, health and safety in the mines, the reduction of accidents, the elimination of fatalities. And that KPI, that set of KPIs, but that number one KPI filters all the way through the business, right through to the mining managers. So no longer are they incentivized just on the amount of resource they mine, they're incentivized, their number one incentive is to reduce accidents and to protect their workers and to eliminate fatalities in the mine. And that just goes to show how all of these issues are connected. Because it's, it is about performance, it is about you know, introducing ESG metric, it is about thinking about your broader stakeholders, but it's also connected to long-term performance. I just think that aligning of internal measures, internal metrics, internal compensation incentives with what your external environment wants, with what your stakeholders want. That is future. So actually you need to be in core, uh, close to the core, core business, but uh, in your case, uh, in your case study, uh, the company use a kind of a new, uh, I would say, practice, which, which is uh, asking stakeholders and stakeholder analysis and so on. And then it uh, could, key, could come to such a conclusions. Um, I think your observation about multidisciplinary teams, uh, it's uh, uh, really a good uh, direction for us uh, to look into. And uh, I think it's not only the Mm, sole expert one person position, but I think it should be a team uh, of, of people now in the companies who really multidisciplinary team who can uh, work on those uh, issues and, uh, and divert the company to the a different uh, different path. I look at our time and uh, I have a last question to, to you. Um, what uh, piece of advice could you give to beginners in the reporting field and to the advanced reporters? Good question. Uh, to the beginners, I always say uh, the first question that you should really be thinking about is, are you, is, are you as a business practicing integrative thinking? Because we found that the most benefits of everything that we're doing is actually coming from the aligning of the, the business, you know, spotting risks and opportunities within the business, uh, which really enhances a huge amount of value. And the way to start that is to bring together people within the different divisions within your business. So at the HR department, the sustainability team, the internal audit team, the finance team, HR, have I said, you know, bring, bring together all the main units within the business. And then on a single piece of paper, ask everyone in the room to write down on half a page what the business model or strategy is for your business. And in our experience, nine times out of 10, you have eight or nine people in the room, you'll get back eight or nine different business models and different strategies because the business we're not you know it, we, the, the world we live in today is a world of specialism where we we go into our silos our business units within our big organizations and we rarely cross fertilize information and thinking particularly at a strategic level and what integrated thinking does is drive down the barriers the internal barriers within the organization and what you end up with is a single strategy and a single business model that you can communicate through the business internally so that you actually start to deliver on a single strategy, immediately value enhancing. But from a management perspective, you're spotting risks and opportunities in different parts of the business that you can, you can elevate and then deal with. When Unilever began to do integrated reporting, that's what the CFO said was the huge benefit of integrated reporting, was that integrated thinking. He was spotting things in the business now because he led that process that he would never have seen before he could deal with those risks much earlier. So get the integrated thinking right. If you're at an advanced uh, stage, uh, what, I, what I would say is that really focus on, because a lot of companies, when they start doing integrated reporting and uh, using the SASB standards, they really are producing what we call combined reports. So they're taking a lot of the existing reporting and they're putting them together in one report. I think, you know, the integration is really, really critical and the connectivity of information, thinking about how you might use digitization and, and technology in order to drive that connectivity. And the final point would be thinking about outcome. Outcomes for your business, you know, how do the different resources you're thinking about combine to create value for your business, but also from a societal perspective, from your industry, if you're in a pharmaceuticals industry, how is the investment in your people impacting value for your 
whole industry, your community, because I think that that's a really important part of this equation. I think you've got the, uh, the SDGs behind you, I think is a really, really important part of achieving sustainable development because sustainable development and high quality performance go hand in hand. Thank you for, for, your, for your advice. I think the connectivity is really important uh, to have a conversation with the board to just reach those who just make them the most important decisions in the company. So I think that's really, really important. Thank you so much for being with us today and uh, for sharing your plans and uh, resources you have for, for us. And I hope, uh, I hope the summit um, will be uh, with political commitments and business commitments and uh, major developments. And I hope we will can talk about it uh, next year. Thank you so much for visiting us.